Hello, everybody in LinkedIn and YouTube land. It's Dr. Caroline Brookfield with another episode of Creative Lifescaping. And uh, this is a series to help you see how other people that are not necessarily considered creatives, how they use creativity in their life at home and at work. So you can try it too, because we know that creativity is the number one skill you need this decade to survive the rapid changes at work. So it's my great pleasure today to introduce my next guest. So Ellen Barton is a purpose-driven business leader. Um, she's a community builder, which is where I met her in her community, the boardroom. Uh, she's an advocate for small business owners everywhere. A serial entrepreneur, Ellen currently runs two successful businesses and her first book, Ready, Set, Grit, was just released. Um, so welcome, Ellen. Hey, Caroline, thank you for having me. Thank you so much for joining me. This so is fun. It, it's so much fun. And we met through the boardroom, which is one of the community you have for entrepreneurs. And uh, you also run a video production company and just released your first book. So how is that? How, how do you how is that all feeling? Do you, how do you manage all those things together? <laughs> it feels like a whirlwind. It's been a crazy couple of weeks. Oh, my goodness. I have to be honest, it's it's been chock-a-block, which is not how I like it. I like to leave more space in my days for creativity, for thinking, for contemplating. But these last couple of weeks have been really, really crazy. I bet. It's, yeah. Um, yeah. Exciting. Sometimes good though. It's busy because you're excited. It's exciting. But hopefully Yeah, you know, sometimes that. I need the um I I, I kind of thrive on that too, that that busyness. And sometimes I need deadlines um, to get stuff done quickly and let it, letting it be, um, you know, like good, not perfect has been a big learning um, process for me, <laughs> especially yeah. in the last couple of weeks. Yeah, I bet. Such a whirlwind. So I'm really curious about with how you got to where you're at. One of the things that I do is kind of like a fun little exercise is when I'm at the grocery store or wherever, if I see a child or an elderly person, I imagine them like is the opposite. So I'm curious, like, how did you start, like, as much as you want to share of your journey, like from when you were first developing your interest in vocations and how you became a serial entrepreneur, video production, author, community builder. So I'd love to know how that those dots moving backwards, as they say. Yeah, sure. Well, first of all, I, I love that exercise. That's really awesome. And that I think appeals to me because I love stories. And I, I also love imagining people's stories and learning about people's stories. Um, one of my favorite parts of my video production job is interviewing people and just drawing out of them um, something beyond their resume, you know, something beyond the, the surface what really motivates them, what really fires them up, like that intrigues me. I love those kind of interviews. And I think that, um, I know I'm not answering your question just yet, but I think, you know, when we're doing videos or something like that, when you can get to that core essence of somebody, you can begin to create um, a really interesting connection with your audience because I'm not the only one that loves those stories. But um, getting back to what you actually asked, <laughs> I, um, I guess the short version is um, my family is um, pretty well seated with entrepreneurs. And so um, becoming one wasn't completely foreign to me when it happened, um, but it wasn't something I set out to do. It was um, something that uh, it was a choice that I made due to circumstances and due to, um, you know, just looking at all of the opportunities that were out there and picking the one that I felt was the most interesting and the best choice. And that was starting a company. And that became, you know, if you think of life as this whole, like, choose your own adventure, that became <laughs> like the craziest roller coaster of them all. But, um, you know, I guess that's that's how um, that part of what I'm doing started. I've always loved writing. Um, as you mentioned, the book just came out and that's been a long term dream of mine to write a book. And so that's been really cool that it happened. It took me a long time to get out of my own way with that. But that happened. Um, 
And what else did you ask? The, the, how did we, how did I get well, started? Do, doing yeah. Video? So when you said that, well, when you said you started the business, cause there's not other jobs out there, was that the video, was that white Knight productions, the video production company? Yes, because I do have okay. these two businesses. So mm -hmm. White Knight was my first, um, it wasn't my first business, but it was my first serious business. Mm, okay. um, so I started a few other, like, I guess, hobby businesses in the past mm -hmm. that I did for fun. I made a little bit of money, but it wasn't like a serious entrepreneurial venture. Mm. Whereas White Knight was um, my family's source of income. So that's very yeah. different. Yeah. And, uh, and I have employees too. So also mm -hmm. their source of income. So that that's mm -hmm. a whole other dynamic than if you're weaving baskets on the side for fun. Yeah. Making and so months. why video production? Like, did you go to school to be to do video production? Or like, how did, you know, it seems, tell me how that happened. Yeah, um, kind of. I went to a million years ago, I went to Cornell. And um, like I said, I've always loved writing. Cornell, I don't know if you are aware of this, but um, they have this weird hybrid model where mm. some colleges at Cornell are private, mm. um, i.e. very expensive, and others are state supported mm. and moderately expensive. And so um, cost weighed into my decision to go to a state school hmm. and study communications instead of the private school where I would have probably done English or something. Ah, okay. Um, so I ended up doing that. And part of that course, I was really interested in radio and, and TV production, video production. So I kind of like gravitated towards that. And then after I graduated, I went out and lived in Prague for five years, lived in the hmm. Czech Republic and worked in film and worked in video and that was how I cut my teeth and learned the craft. And then my husband and I moved out to LA and lived out there for 10 years. And we, um, he has a longer history in video than I do. He's a, he's a seasoned veteran, a well-seasoned veteran. I am a seasoned veteran. He's well-seasoned. Um, <laughs> but we, when we moved, we lived out in LA for 10 years and then moved to upstate New York without a whole lot of a plan. Uh, we were just like, I had a job I brought with me. He was tired of his job. So mm -hmm. we were like, you know, let's make a change. And um, after we moved here, we realized um, that maybe we could make something of the video production thing. Mm -hmm. It wasn't on, it wasn't on our mind before we made the move, but after we were here for a while and saw a potential opportunity, we just made this crazy move and opened the company. I love it. Yeah. And, and, you know, most people would consider a you know, video production company and your background to be very creative. So I'm curious, um, like, do you, have you always thought of yourself as being someone that has, is creative? Not really. Honestly. <laughs> um, it's only, and a lot of people will have said that to me, like, oh, you're so creative. And I used to say, no, I'm not, you know, not, what are you talking about? It's only in the recent years I've come to kind of own that and been able to say, you know, I guess I am creative. I, I've learned to um, define creativity in what I do a little bit differently and to appreciate that there is a lot of creativity in storytelling. There is an art to interviewing people. There is... Um, some creativity in, in, in piecing together a video or writing a book or, you know, the things even in, I love to cook and I love to garden and this year, and I'm kind of a beginner gardener, to be honest. So although I don't know what I'm doing, my garden was amazing this year. And it was like this cacophony of color and I had, I, I grew all this stuff from seeds and I had like zinnias and dahlias and mm. these amazing, these, my mums that I didn't know enough to dig up last year became like these hedges of, they're enormous. And, uh, and I live in the Northeast. I wasn't expecting them to live. Mm -hmm. um, but just like I had to keep moving plants because they, they're, it's just amazing. And we have this, this, flower bed we, we we made my husband and I created this um it's a he well he 
Okay, I plan. I it was my idea, but he <laughs> did the work. Um, so it's like the stone flower bed. He told me he moved like I don't know, like fifty tons of rocks or something. He tells me frequently how hard he's worked <laughs> <laughs> from my ideas. <laughs> but we have this like so it's it's like a double wall, and we have all these flowers, and we sit out there. That's where our table is, and our patio, and so you're surrounded by like this jungle of color it's amazing love it and like even that's creativity you know it's oh, like yeah. accidental but it's cool <laughs> yeah well <clears throat> what you've described what you've described sorry just give me a second what what do i need to do for my frog in my throat when i'm speaking <laughs> you need to just roll with it caroline just <clears throat> just roll with it pretend okay. it's part of the plan <laughs> part of the plan yeah <laughs> So when we're talking about things like gardening, I always consider that like an everyday creativity. And I think that is key to yeah. what you said is you didn't think you're, you're creative, which is laughable with all of the creative things you do, creating community and, and the gardening. And um, I think people confuse like Mona Lisa creativity with everyday yeah. creativity like you're talking about. And I love it, especially what you said about your garden, because that's such a metaphor for creativity in general, like throwing some seeds in the soil getting surprised at what comes and then adapting and changing and tweaking it until it becomes what you want, which might even be a temporary thing. So that's an, that's an excellent story. Thank you. I'd love to see pictures of your garden. I might also oh, a beginner. I've been gardening for a while, but I'm still a beginner yeah. gardening. I'm like, I don't have enough patience, but the good thing is I live in Calgary, Alberta, which is North of Montana. So our gardening season is so short that it's perfect for me with ADHD because like it doesn't ever last very long. So <laughs> like I'm tired of gardening. Oh, everything's dead now. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah. And what, yeah. So do you think, do you think now with your new um, idea around what is creativity, um, do you, um, do you think everybody's creative? You know, I do think everybody's creative. I, I think a lot of people have trouble owning it. And I, I went through that too. Um, I'm a little bit better now. And it's probably, it. I, I'm sure you had some influence in that too, your ideas around creativity. Um, for a while, I didn't give it a lot of thought. I would just brush it off. Mm -hmm. And people would say that to me like, oh, you're very creative. You have such a creative job. And like you and I were talking about before um, th this, um, this started, that um, a lot of my job, I wouldn't necessarily consider creative, but then there is the other side of it that that really is. Um, and I do think everybody has their thing where they can bring their gifts to the world. Um, like I never used to think about cooking as creative. Mm -hmm. I, and I, I love to cook and I, I um, have come to get a little more creative, I guess, in the kitchen and and um, at and more willing to add my own take on recipes and stuff and and it's a little bit it's part of my love language you know I love to cook for friends and family mm -hmm. and um, it's it's just you know it's just very fulfilling to me and I think when you find that thing that fulfills you I was on um, a talk last night and somebody was talking about um, his love for lettering he loves to just you know oh. do lettering and. And um, that's his thing. And, and so when you figure out what your thing is and you're willing to own it and explore it and, um, you know, do, make time to do it, um, I think you can become very creative. You just have to learn to say those words. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, I totally agree with you. And that kind of takes me to a question further down that I was going to ask you, but I think it fits here. Um, what do you think are the biggest obstacles to either your creativity or other people's creativities and how do you, how do how creativity and how do you get over that? Like, what are your tips for helping people to, to allow mm. that creativity to come out? I, I think for me, a big part of it would be being overscheduled. Um, mm. I just can't, you know, they, it's like the analogy where you have to put your own oxygen mask on before you mm. can help anybody else. And, I think I have to be um, in a place, I have to have space to be creative, to think, you know, to mm -hmm. consider, um, like I said, this last couple of weeks has been super crazy busy. Mm -hmm. And I, I was almost getting um, 
like I'm not exactly sick, but like my, my back really hurt. And I was like, what's this about? I didn't hurt my, you know, I didn't do anything to my back, but it was all the stress and all the, you know, effects of not giving myself that space. So mm -hmm. I think for me, it's time is a big part of it. And just making sure that that time away from the computer and away from the demands of life um, is open to me, you know? Mm hmm. Yeah. And it sounds like for you, that could be cyclical. And I correct me if I'm wrong, but it sounds like, you know, when you're writing the book, like this is a temporary thing for you. This is like you're not in in creation, divergent thinking mode. You're in like execution because you've released your book. But this isn't a permanent position for you, which it is for many people. So what I'm hearing is that making time and creating space for the most part in your life and not being full of busy work all the time is, is what's making, is that, is that right? Am I getting that right? Yeah. Uh, yes, you are getting that right. And you know, people, everybody's busy. Everybody's mm -hmm. busy. You can't talk to anybody who's not going to tell you that they're busy yet. You take the busiest person uh, that, you know, and have their, um, hot water tank explode in their basement or have their, um, you know, I don't know, like mother gets sick or something and they're yeah. going to make time for that. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I, you know, I think there's also for many of us opportunities to delegate some of our tasks or, mm -hmm. you know, just find ways to prioritize a space for being creative, a space for thinking and mm -hmm. thinking, maybe thinking of it as a form of self-care that's really important um, because like for me, I was manifesting this, uh, this stress. It was, it has been a, a stressful couple of weeks in that in, in happily, that isn't my constant state of being. So yay. Um, but if it was, I, I think that I would need to recognize that and need to find a way to make that space because mm -hmm you know, it's really, it's true. Your health is the most important thing, your mental health and your mm -hmm. physical health. And mm -hmm. you, you have to prioritize that. Yeah. And I think you have the advantage of being from a position where you see that and you've prioritized that and you've seen the benefits. I think um, what is important for any listeners who are watching this to know if you have always been living in the state of busyness that Ellen's talking about in stress, you don't understand the benefits because you haven't tried it. So I think starting with those five habits I talk about, like daydreaming, facing ambiguity, being, you know, looking for new experiences, curiosity, you know, those are all things that you can do in only a few minutes a day. And then as you get those benefits that research has proven the benefits of engaging with your individual creativity, then, you know, you might start being able to be more motivated to incorporate some of those um, habits more into your day. So I want to make sure we have time to talk about Ready, Set, Grit. So I am so excited about this. I bought it already. I haven't got it yet because it's on pre-order. But tell me, tell me like what inspired you to write the, well, first, maybe a little bit about what the book's about and what inspired you to write a book to help people, you know, use grit to get better in their, in their life and business. Yeah, sure. Well, I'll show it to you. I, I, I yes. have it right here. I got a way to Look, show the here it is. Yay. I yeah. love the cover. I love the, I just love it. Thank Such you. Cover. Thank you. Look at this is like that mirrored my oh, yes. I was saying to Caroline, my camera is mirrored. And so like it's going in the opposite direction. I think it's gonna go in. It's that's good. It's not creative novelty. exercise. I was gonna say it's rewiring <laughs> your your brain, the neuroplasticity. So yeah, yeah. So thank you, technology. Yeah. Um <laughs> so the book is called Here's Ready Set Grit because it's divided into three parts. Um, ready is about mindset, you know, ready is about, um, the whole book is about being able to make a change and go to the next level and start embracing your gifts and start doing something that's important to you that you've been putting off, whether that is growing a business or whether that's simply picking up a paintbrush or, um, volunteering at your animal shelter or with kids or like whatever your thing is. And if you find that you've been saying, oh, I'll get to that next year or, oh, you know, I'll write that book when I retire or whatever. My message of the book is, um, hello, you know, don't wait, <laughs> get to it now, find a way to do it. And uh, the first part of the book is called Ready. It's a mindset shift because that is the first step to being able to make any kind of change. You have to 
deal with your internal dialogue. You have to um, get rid of your limiting decisions and your limiting beliefs and um, believe that your goal is possible. You know, many people have big goals and then they just um, you know, push them aside because they're embarrassed to be dreaming big or they're, you know, yeah. they talk themselves out of it right away. Yeah, so. I, I def that definitely resonates with me with trying to, with building my business as a public speaker. You know, you hit these um, points of like, who am I? Like the imposter syndrome, like you said, right. the limiting belief. And then it's just easier to come up with excuses why it won't work. Like, well, you know, COVID, so I can't be a speaker. You know, there's so many things. So right. I love that mindset. I, I'm deep in it myself. So it's a work in progress. Right. I mean, in, and just because I wrote the book doesn't mean I don't struggle with the same things. It took me four years <laughs> to finish the book because I, because of that very reason, you know, I was second guessing everything. I kept going back and trying to edit it more. And, um, you know, I was like, oh, it's, it, I was putting such a um, weight around it and such an importance mm -hmm. around it. And it is, you know, I, I'm proud of the book. It's a good book. I've gotten a lot of great feedback about it from it for it. Um, but it's, um, you know, I, I was getting in my own way mm -hmm. and it's easy to do that. And mm -hmm. it's not, so I don't want to pretend I have it all figured out. I've, I've been doing a lot of work on this. I know you've been doing a lot of work mm -hmm. on this, but it's like, it's a constant, Mm -hmm. journey. You know, we're never really done until we're really done. <laughs> well, and, and I personally really, re like, I really bristle at like gurus that are like, these are your yeah. three ways that to become how great, you know, I bristle at yeah. that anyway. So but okay, so ready, then set and then grit. Yeah, so set is about foundation. Mm -hmm. So set is about, you know, getting yourself um, set to do these big things that you want to do. And you need to have your support system around you. You need to have a handle on um, time and, you know, delegation mm -hmm. or, you know, things like that. And you, you need to be in a position to move forward with a strong base. Mm -hmm. So that's what that mm -hmm. section is about. Okay. And then grit, as you can imagine, is about showing up and doing the work and coming back the next day and doing it again and again mm -hmm. and again. And when it gets tough, you do it again. And um, it, it doesn't need to be overwhelming. It doesn't even need to be hard. It just needs to be consistent. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There's, I've read a quote some, I don't know, it's one of these productivity people. It was like, uh, the difference with people who achieve their dream, dreams is not anything big. It's, and I'm very much paraphrasing here. It's yeah. um, the small, mundane, boring tasks that they do day after day after day after day. Is that kind of what you're talking about? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. yeah, because, yeah. you know, it, if you do have, especially if you do have one of those big goals, it can feel so overwhelming that you get, it's that, um, you know, you get paralyzed and then you don't mm -hmm. do anything. And the point of that section is just to help people, help encourage people to do something, do the mm -hmm. smallest thing, do it consistently, mm -hmm. do it now. Mm -hmm. Don't wait. I, I have a story in there about my um, former neighbor when I used to live in California, she lived across the street, my neighbor Beth. And um, she would always say she had, she was married and she had a young son and she'd always be like, you know, when we win the lottery someday, we're going to be uh. in Santa Cruz. And, uh, and then one day, it took her a couple of years, but one day she's like, you know what? We didn't win the lottery, but we're going to move. We're going to find a way to have that experience mm -hmm. of living in Santa Cruz even, um, and I'm kind of getting goosebumps saying it because me, because it's important, you know, take those steps today, do something mm -hmm. today to move towards your goal. Mm -hmm. Um, it's, it's just, it's something I feel so strongly about. And I, you know, I don't, I hope it doesn't come off sounding, you know, like some t-shirt or something. But no, <laughs> what I'm wondering is like, you know, you know, it makes sense. It's easy to read that and say, yes, the small steps every day. But what do you, do you talk in the book or do you have suggestions? Because what happens to me is I'll do it for like three weeks. And then, you know, th this idea of like getting back to your baseline and you excuse it. So like, oh, well, I'm not feeling well today or I'll do it tomorrow. Like what, to me, that's, that, that for me is the barrier. Do you have any suggestions or talk in the book about this resistance that comes up after like why so many people give up on their everyday task, right? 
Hmm. I have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> no, of course they do, you know, yeah. because life gets in the way. And mm -hmm. I think it's always, so yes, in the book, there's a ton of exercises. Every chapter has exercises oh, yeah. and action steps and suggestions yeah. because, um, this whole journey, this whole process, it's not a one size fits all, you know, mm -hmm. it's a, it's a choose your own adventure. It's like you read 10 exercises and you're like, oh, number two and number eight, those are going to work for me. Gotcha. Um, yeah. You know, so I'm hoping that people will take it that way. Perfect. And maybe if they get stuck, they can come back and try it a different one, you know? Right. Yeah, perfect. Um, and I've got the link up here for the book, ellenbarton.com forward slash book. Um, I pre-ordered mine on Amazon as well. So if you, you look up Ready, Set, Grit on Amazon, you will find it. And uh, I think I love the idea of the interactivity and the kind of prescriptive, not pre prescriptive, the levels of or the steps of how to do that. And uh, I just know it's going to be an amazing book. So um, I didn't want to forget the truth. I know you wanted to forget the truth or dare. So we're going to end up the interview <laughs> before I say thank you to Ellen. Um, so Ellen wanted to do truth like everybody else. And then she couldn't think of a story. So then she's bravely asking to do a dare. So my dare to you with the two minutes we have left is to pretend that you're an alien coming to earth for the first time and you found a rake. And you're what give me like 30 seconds as the alien. What do you think the rake is for? Like you pick up the rake and then just tell me what happens. You don't actually have to have it. Oh, rake. I don't have to actually act it out. Well, yeah, you have to act it out, but you can just hold it like mime, be a mime. Oh, I wish I had a <laughs> rake handy. I do not. <laughs> but this is the creativity of the dare. <laughs> I do not. Well, I guess if I was an alien and I found this thing. I might pick it up upside down and be like, what is this? And then I might try to scratch my back with it <laughs> or um, run it because I think the aliens have hair. So I might try to run <laughs> it through my hair and then I might be confused. Um, so maybe I would put it down on the ground and um, I don't know, maybe lay on it and try to scratch my back because obviously my back is very itchy. <laughs> <laughs> And then um, I would I would pick it up. I'd be very confused. Um, maybe I would twirl around this thing like a like a maypole. I could stick it in the oh, ground. Stick it in the ground. <laughs> I love it. I don't know. That's where perfect. it is the hat. <laughs> where is the hat? Yes. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you for participating in my dare. And uh, so Ellen, um, you can find Ellen at her website, ellenbarton.com. Um, I will put some links in the um, notes as well as the LinkedIn event. And I just wanted to say thank you so much, Ellen, for sharing your story and your book and your creativity with us today. And uh, I look forward to hearing more about Ready, Set, Grip, and Grit and using it myself. Oh, awesome. Well, Caroline, it was really fun. Thank you for having me. And um, thank you for not making me sing. I was I know. worried that that was going to be the dare. I know. I won't tell you yeah. the dare, but I did I did tell you. You, know, you said, don't make me sing. I said, that's okay. I was like, and for I your own safety, for your yeah. own health and safety. <laughs> Even worse, we could sing together. That would be, that I'm, yeah, Ooh. that would be interesting. And I have to apologize. <laughs> like video production company, I've got the worst setup right now because I'm in an Airbnb because I got my house, had to have some rent of work being done. So hopefully I'll be back in my own space with better stuff next time oh so. caroline it, it doesn't matter because you're this you're the reason people tune in it's your Aww. energy your your questions and in just your presence here so thank oh, you that, i should be i should ready myself the mindset thank you thank you Ellen. I, appreciate that. <laughs> I really awesome. mean that but thank Aww, you very you much too. thank yeah. you so much and good luck with everything okay thank you have a great day thanks you too thank you bye-bye